Hey everybody, I just thought I'd turn one of the live streams that I've done with my students into a video for everybody to watch. So in the video I'm going through two spectroscopy questions. The questions or the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So I'd recommend that you have a go at the questions first and then watch the video for the answers. Obviously, if you're not already subscribed, please do so and make sure you check that bell icon so that you get notifications whenever I post any new content. So the first thing of the two questions was this one here. So we've got this pollutant CXHYO. So the first thing I would, if I was reading through this, the first thing we can say straight away is there's only one oxygen in it. So it can't be a carboxylic acid. So straight away, you know, it's not a carboxylic acid because it's only got one O. All right. Nice to see people annotating the spectra in their homework. So that's good. So remember that the, the sort of keys, the first key zone is around about the 3000 mark. And you, if you watch my live lessons on a Wednesday, you'll be familiar with these things here. So we know that it's only got one oxygen, so really it can only be an alcohol. So does that absorption there for the OH of an alcohol look anything like that? And the answer is no, because well, there's two reasons. It's at the wrong wave numbers. So they're at 3000, whereas the OH of an alcohol is higher than that. So it's further to the left. So basically all I would be saying here is there's no OH. And then the other thing is, is this one here at about 1700. That's the number I remember. 1700 centimetres to minus one is a C double bond O. We can ignore all of that mess there. So we're just focusing on there's no OH, but it has got a C double bond O. So therefore, we're dealing with a carbonyl. So you could just say, therefore, carbonyl. Uh, so it's an, at this point, we know that it's either an aldehyde or a ketone. So it's, it's definitely got a C double bond O. Okay. Right. So we move on to the mass spectrum now. Remember, there's one peak you must look at straight away, and it's this one here. The one furthest to the right, molecular ion peak. And it's at 58, so therefore the MR is 58. Okay, so we'll come on to this in a second, but I'm just kind of giving you my sort of logic through this question. Right, so we know it's... It's made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We know it's MR is 58. We know it's either an aldehyde or a ketone, so therefore it's got a C double bond O. So what I would do now is I would go 58, that's the mass of the whole molecule, minus the CO part, that's 12, 16, 28, um, is 30. So the rest of the molecule is 30. It's only carbons and hydrogens in the rest of the molecule. So that's C2H6, that's 30, isn't it? 24 plus six is 30. Okay, so now let's just add this together. We've got C2H6 and CO, therefore the molecular formula is C3H6O because the question did specify it wanted to know the molecular formula, okay? So that's how I would get to that, okay? So at this point, we now know that it's an aldehyde or ketone with three carbons. So our options are propanol or propanone. They both have Three carbon, six hydrogens and oxygen. So both got an MR of 58. So now we need to focus on this key fragment peak. Now there was lots of fragment peaks in the spectrum, but this one here was key and quite a few of you found it. So that's really, really good. 
So we're looking for one of these molecules that could give us this fragment at 29. Now again, the more mass spec you look at, the more mass spectra you look at, you become familiar with 29 as a fragment peak. So there's two common reasons for a 29. The first one is C2H5 plus fragment. So an e basically an ethyl group breaks off, okay? Or something else that was, has a mass of 29 is CHO plus. 12 plus, 30, plus 1 is 13, plus 16 is 29. So one of these molecules here can actually generate a fragment. Actually, one of them can generate both of those fragments. It's that one. Okay, so I'll just change the colour pen. If that broke off there, and this right hand part carried the positive charge, you'd get the fragment peak would be caused um, due to that bit with the positive charge. Or the CH3CH2 plus fragment would, you see it's still got 29, so either way it's causing a peak of 29. So that was the answer. So there was a map, you had to like narrow it down to that as being the answer, okay, to get full marks. Some of you kind of left it as an either or, obviously you can't do that because it, the question didn't say, suggest possible structures for the, for the pollutant, it said structure singular. So you had to go for one, um, one option. So it was that one, okay. Um, the next part of the question, it just says, how, excellent Catherine, how could the mass spectrum be used to um, identify the compound? So there's a tiny section in the notes pack. Um, it's literally one line, okay? Basically, the fragmentations, if I draw some more peaks on here now, I can't remember exactly where they were, but let's just, let's just mess around with this a little bit, okay? Um, let's put a couple of them up there, all right? So the fragmentation pattern is like a fingerprint. So it's unique to that molecule, all right? So if you've got a database of spectra where you know what the compound is, if you just feed in the spectrum from your mystery compound and the computer would find the match, are you okay? It would find the one that looks the same as the one you've got, okay? So what you needed to say for that second part of question one was, um, compare your spectrum to, so compare the spectrum of the pollutant to um, spectra of known compounds, okay? Or you could say compare to a spectral database because obviously they're known compounds, okay? So not many people got that one, okay? And it's probably because you've maybe just skimmed past it in the notes and didn't it didn't register with you. But that's how you would use... Um, a fragmentation pattern to see what you've got okay so a spectral database so a library of known compound spectrum okay right we're gonna rub this out we'll go on to question two okay question two a um, we're given some percentage composition values for um, a compound that contains carbon hydrogen and bromine so it's obviously a haloalkane and we were told that it's um, it's MR of the isomers, the MR was less than 150. Right, okay. So question two, so first of all, as soon as you see percentage composition values, you need to work out, and you will need to work out the empirical formula, okay? So very quickly, 29.29, 5.70, these are the values in the question, 65.01, divide by the MR, 12179.9 and that gives you the reason I'm doing this this the moles value that you get now in this line must be the three significant figures where's my rubber gone if you don't um give the three significant figure values you you will lose a mark okay so three significant figures for the moles so 2.44 5.70, that zero is really important, and 0 0.814. Divide by the smallest, which obviously that one, so that gives you a one, that gives you a seven, 
that gives you a 3. Okay, so the empirical formula is C3H7Br. And it was great to see people just launching it almost into automatic pilot. First, the next thing you should do is work out the MR of that, which came out at 122.9. So do we multiply out? No, because that would take you up to, well, past 144, 244, sorry. Um, you, you can only go up to 150. So that is also the molecular formula as well. So that's the empirical formula and molecular formula. Okay, so therefore, what are our options? Well, three carbons, bromine at the end, so one bromopropane, or three carbons with bromine at number two. Both of those have C3H7Br as their formula. Okay, so there were your options. I'll keep these on the board because we're going to refer back to them. Right, so this is the next part of the question. It says the isomers from part A were heated under reflux with sodium hydroxide. Um, aqueous sodium hydroxide to form two compounds E and F and it was really really good to see students sort of showing me the logic so they were saying um, that reaction would cause them these to become alcohols okay so we're not going to say which one's E and which one's F yet but when these two are reacted with um, so heated with sodium hydroxide aqueous that one would become propan one all that one would become propan two all okay so I'm, i haven't answered the question yet i'm just sort of thinking through the information okay it then says that e was heated under reflux so e heated under reflux so that's obviously important the fact that specified reflux uh, with um, acidified potassium dichromate, which is obviously an oxidizing agent. So I'm just going to put oxidizing agent there. Okay. And that gave compound G. Right. So we've got the infrared spectrum of G. So let's just quickly see M minus 1, 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000. Roughly, what does it look like? Well, it's got big, broad absorption at 3,000, either side of 3,000. And it's also got a big, strong absorption at about 1,700. Okay, and then it's got a bit of a mess going on there. Right. So, broad OH of carboxylic acid. Some people are still not saying what type of OH they're dealing with, so you need to say, is it an alcohol or a carboxylic acid? Um, so we've got that there. That's a car C double bond O. So effectively, that's what we've got, something like that. Therefore, we can say G is a carboxylic acid. Okay. So if G is a carboxylic acid, that means E, the alcohol that it was formed from, must be a primary alcohol. So this one is E. And um, this one, therefore, must be F. The secondary alcohol must be F. Okay. So G, we haven't said what G actually is, what would that turn into if you oxidised it under reflux? G must be propanoic acid. Okay, so that was the answer for G. And then the only other thing was you had to write an equation for the formation of G from E. So I'll just create some space. Get rid of those. So um, we're oxidizing E under reflux with oxidizing agent. So E, um, prop mono, O in square brackets, G 
gives propanoic acid one mole of water to one's oxidizing agent. Okay, so that was that. So it said that, um, what was it again? It was that one there, it was the carboxylic acid. It was G reacted with F, which was the secondary alcohol, um, with heated in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid, right? So carboxylic acid, um, right? So remember, F was the secondary alcohol. So I'm drawing it that way. I'm gonna lasso out the water molecule and we're going to create the product, which was an ester, which looks like that. It didn't want the equation, it just wanted the structure, so that was H. Okay, and that was the homework.